All right, folks, just want to go over a bunch of little things today. More of a channel update news. I want to touch on standard, reserve list cards, the secret lair, Walking Dead, ooh, ooh, Boogeyman. Um, overall, just kind of what I see going on with the flow of money, people buying, you know, and of course, Zendikar, expected value, some detail. I want to kind of touch on a lot of different things. Um, so first thing, um, reserve list prices are holding quite impressively. I thought for sure we'd start to see a little bit of retracement, but like... Mishra's Workshop, the Bazaars, the Libraries, um, even a lot of Legends Rares, they're surprisingly holding up very well. I don't think this is mostly due to just the price going up, but it's mostly just lack of supply. As I've been saying for years, as the years tick by, the supply just being non-existent is going to allow the people who have the cards to pretty much, if people are wanting to sell them, which I don't recommend, they can kind of just set their own price, and I'm seeing more of that versus a lot of actual transactions going through at these higher prices. Um, again, I think these are side effects of a lot of people being angry and frustrated at Wizards of the Coast based on the direction of new things. And you're seeing a flow of money go to the path of least resistance, which is back to old cards and sealed product. So let's jump to standard boxes. So spending a lot of time, this is going to be kind of a, a big news thing for a lot of people. Uh, patrons and people are going to be like, oh, okay. Um, overall, I'm going to reduce and hedge some of my risk and exposure to some of the new Magic products. Uh, for example, um, Core 2021, um, if you're a patron or anyone just curious, the Supply Half, which is a couple pallets, a couple thousand boxes, I'm going to run that out and I'm not going to restock it and I'm probably going to pull that set early, even before it actually goes out of print. Um, probably maybe a similar thing with Throne, but mostly Core 21 because... Simply put, to be very blunt with everyone, um, while the collector boxes still sell fine, the standard boxes for like Core 21 is following the same path of like Core 2019. When I sold Core 2019, nobody bought it. Even at 79 ships, people just don't buy it. It's literally just no sales. So I'm just not going to order more of it at this point. I'm just going to let it stay in stock for either a week to a month or two months, however long it takes to sell it, and I'm just going to let it go. So, and I'll readdress it and I'll reevaluate another three, six months from now, similar to Theros at the beginning. Sometimes you got to walk away from things for a couple months. Let the market do its thing and maybe reevaluate every 90 days if you should come back or just sometimes in life. It, it takes a better person to know when you just got to walk away from a certain particular product or a situation, a job, a person, a relationship, any, any situation you can apply that to. There are times in life you just have to be at that level where you just have to acknowledge the best course of action is to let it go. And I'm looking at core 2021 as that similar thing right now, everybody. I just, I, I don't like what I see. And it's, the, the, the funny thing is, I actually think it's one of the best core sets I've seen in years, in years. But that's really not what the market and the expected value is right now due to reprints and jumpstart of the same overlapping cards, collector boxes. We're just... The, the, the product itself is just not doing well, and I think the product's actually a good product. So I'll probably readdress that as the product gets towards the end of the life cycle. But in the meantime, you know, me building that much inventory to sell the product that's not selling, there's no point in me having those kind of resources tied up in a product that no one's buying. So uh, jump over, but a little contrarian point of view here. Uh, as far as sealed product as a whole, the Pioneer Era boxes, which is post-return to Ravnica Gatecrash, everyone, continues to actually still perform and hold its ground really, really well. Like, I, I am blown away still by, like, Kaladesh and Battle for Zendikar. And I'm blown away on some of the sets I haven't been doing much on. The cheaper ones. The Shadows of Ranistrad is cheaper. You know, Eldritch Moon was cheap for the longest time, but then that rubber band back to almost 200. You know, the... the the Bronze Era boxes right before collector's things came in are still incredibly solid, which blows my mind. There's many moments I'm like, I never thought I would say that based on when I was even selling those products. I mean, you know, like Rivals of Ixalan. Regular Ixalan. I cannot believe, uh, like, a box of Rivals of Ixalan, if you're lucky, what, $125 on eBay plus tax? So what, 140 out the door is your cheapest rivals of Ixalan on eBay? Like, that's incredible. That's flipping incredible. So, I mean, it just... It's supply of sealed and the value of sealed continues to really hold its own. It's astonishes me. I totally didn't see that coming. I thought it was going to take years for a set like Ixalan or Rivals 
to even move to like 110, 105 a box. And that just, you know, that's a good example of contrarian investing where everybody thought it was a dumpster fire and nobody really wanted it. And that's a very real situation that can happen for the new Theros set, the new Core 21 set, you know. These are very rare, real scenarios. So I wanted to bring that into things. So next thing I want to jump over to everybody is collection buying people. A lot of people were really, I don't want to say angry or irritated, but disappointed when I've, as you've seen, it's been how long? Weeks. Probably almost a month now since I put a collection buying video up. Which a lot of people, I didn't realize how many of you all actually enjoyed those things. When I go through them, talk about the cards, and, you know, I've done so many of them, I didn't think it was really that dramatic of a thing. But, though I, I really, I had stores all over the country kind of me saying, Rudy, we have a playlist in our local LGS where of just you going through, like, collections, and we'll, like, loop that, just showing, like, cool magic cards. And I, I didn't realize it was that big of a deal. I truly did not comprehend how much people enjoyed that video series. Seriously. Um, I get some messages like, Rudy, why aren't you doing the whiteboard videos? Well, simply put, they take the most amount of work, hours of planning, hour of filming. I have to do editing, put it up, and they get the least amount of views. Like, literally, they'll get 10, 15,000 views. And I know it's still a lot, but compared to, you know, I hate to say it, uh, a box opening that may get 30 to 100,000 views, you know, or a discussion like this that gets similar. It's just the work reward that the type of thing. It is what it just takes me a lot of time for those type of videos. But so back to the collection videos. Based on the feedback of patrons, the public, the comments below, um, I am actually refilming some of the collection videos from March, April, May, June of 2020 when I was buying substantial collections when the virus and the world went to crap in the market. Everything went to, and everybody made fun of me saying, this idiot's staying the course. And you need, and he's buying magic cards. Well, a lot of those videos, when I played them back, did not age well because I'm showing, like I told you guys, this. It just, it looks, it just looks in bad taste because of the prices and the numbers I'm stating. At this point, at the end of 2020, it just like it looks like just an absolute either Rudy's lying or he's scamming or it's just I didn't like the vibe that the videos gave off that I filmed from March, April, May, June, July of 2020. If I were to publish those today in October, November, I didn't think it was going to go over well, especially showing, you know, Mishra's workshops that there was like four or five of them in some of these collections. And I was paying, you know, $600 a piece. And, you know, and I'm saying in the video, these are underpriced. This is stupid. You shouldn't, you know, these are, these are still too cheap. And, the, you know, and it, I just don't feel it aged well. So I had to use a judgment call on that. So I am refilming some of those videos, though, like the one with uh, the Middle Earth. And uh, some of the other boxes and collections, I've refilmed some of these videos. So I'm going to do some collection videos, but they're going to be refilmed. They're not going to be the original videos of these collections that just never got publicly shown. So there's still going to be collections that we haven't, I haven't shared, you guys haven't seen, but they're not going to be the original video. So it's going to be a little bit more 2020 end of the year friendly, which brings me to the next point of conversation. The culture around Magic the Gathering, the state of everything of LGS's, what I see online and other YouTube channels and magic, the comments, the, just simply put, the best way to say it is normally in life, everybody, on a scale of 1 to 10, when you see people walking around going to your local Taco Bell, they're probably like a 3 out of 10. They're probably about a 3 on the 1 to 10 scale of frustration, anger, and what they're dealing with in life. You know, so when something happens, it pushes Timmy from a 3 to maybe a 5 or 6, and it gets him really angry. Well, the problem is in late 2020, all of us, when you see people in public in Taco Bell, everybody a 1 to 10, everybody's already like an 8. Everybody's already on edge. The mask thing, the political stuff, the anger, the anxiety, the stress, the finance, the emotions and duress is pushed everybody. When, by the time people leave their house, they're already like an 8 out of 10. So when something happens, it pushes people, in, you know, the, the Karen term and everything, it pushes people from 8 out of 10 to like an 11 out of 10. And boils over. That's what we're seeing a lot in the world right now. Same thing with the magic culture, everybody. So because of this culture and the higher level of anxiety and anger and frustration and emotions that are happening, which a lot of it's justified and some of it isn't justified. That's just how life is. But because of that, obviously, that's flowed very heavily into Magic the Gathering. We all know that. It's, it's flowed the culture of everything. I mean, it, it's insane. The amount of... Frustration towards even Watsy 
corporate, uh, Mero, Moreau, you know, all these people. Mark Rosewater, I guess, is his actual name. You know, to see what I, you know, going on with the secret lair, the walking dead, the frustration, I get it. I get it. I don't, I'm not happy with it either. I don't like the concept of magic turning into crossovers of, you know, the Red Power Ranger attacks, you know, over here, Stewie Griffin. Peter Griffin plays his Bart Simpson card. The slingshot comes out and hits the Transformer tank. You know, I get it. Everybody loses, Barney the Dinosaur comes out. Up oh, the Teletubby, I, I get it. I do. I, I get the anger and frustration towards Wizards and everything. But at the same time, I gotta be that one voice to say, if there's anything I've learned about Wizards, when they say these things and they take this path and they do these certain decisions or choices that may not be the best for the game, the one thing we can all agree on is Wizards will change direction again. Does that make sense? Even no matter how right or wrong they are, I am, you all are, they will change course again. They'll modify the path. As we push forward, Wizards is going to watch what happens. You know, I'm filming this video the day, the morning of, or the day after, the first, second day of Walking Dead Secret Lair launch. And I've already received a ton of messages saying, Rudy, I wanted to see the demo. Apparently, what I've been told this, get this, for those of you still watching, apparently there are some people tracking where I guess if you go to the Walking, the Secret Lair website, when you hit the checkout thing, there's like this little bar, and like a little guy walks in the bar showing how long you are in the wait time to check out so the website doesn't crash. And apparently I was told, and this may be a load of blogna, baloney, but I was told apparently on big launches at the beginning of Secret Lair, like the Super Drop Summer thing, and the, uh, the ones at the beginning of last year, the original um, Secret Lairs. Apparently when you went to this website to check out, the line would be 10, 20, 30 minutes before you'd have to wait and get in queue. So a lot of people have been using that to test to see how many people are buying and you can see how many people are really buying it. And I thought that was interesting. And again, I don't know how accurate this is, but what I was told, at least in the last six to eight hours when I woke up this morning, is that even when the Secret Lair Walking Dead went live, there's been no line. Like, if you go to the website, I'm assuming it's still live by the time this video goes up, and we'll try to get it up pretty quick so it doesn't sit delay in the queue for a couple days. But I'm assuming you can go to the website, and there's no one in line. There's no one checking. Like, you can click check out, and the website can handle it. There's no rush. There's no high demand of trying to buy, even when this went live, to even the next day. This is what I've been told. Now, again, that may not mean anything. Maybe they upgraded the website servers where they can handle 10,000 people at once, and that's kind of a bad indicator. It's possible. But I found that to be intriguing. Because I remember people telling me at the beginning with the secret layers, the demand of so many people are going to these websites that you would have to sit for like 25 minutes just to even check out. And apparently that's been dropping every secret layer release. And now it's like there's no wait time. Which tells me they either upgraded the website and handle more bandwidth. Or B, simply put, maybe the magic community actually is throttling back buying these products to send Wizards a message. Maybe it's actually happening. And if it is, that's great news. Because that is the strongest message you can send and the only message you can send to Wizards to make them change course at a faster rate of speed. You know, so I, I want, I thought that was important to bring up. So uh, to a lot of people be happy. I'm going to, you know, due to the outcry of the collection videos, I'm refilming and I'm going to have some newer ones filmed that I feel more, you know, fitting for where the market is right now. And then of course, um, I thought it was really interesting. I just want to touch on that culture with magic and the frustration and the anxiety and stress of everybody. And, you know, the funny thing is, you know, I guess if this wasn't, I'm going to wrap this video up. I think that's enough topic. I've got like five more topics. We'll do another video. I don't want to make like a 30, 40 minute video. I guess the funny thing is, everybody, when I, when I look at everything with magic right now, philosophical Rudy time, the products of magic right now are really good. It's some of the better neat sets, like looking at Ikoria, Throne of Eldraine, even Theros in the core set. You know, now I'm not super familiar with the Zendikar, the new, the third return to return to Zendikar yet, but, you know, overall, the products that we're seeing, that I'm seeing in 2020, the year of the Commander, I mean, the Commander Zendikar set, the Commander, the main Commander set earlier this year, the five deck big one, the products are all actually really well. They're, they're good. I don't think it's a garbage fire. 
Now, obviously, these broken cards and lack of testing with R&D and all these banning cards, all these cards being banned in standard in every single set is a problem. That's stupid. It shows just lack of attention to detail, and it reinforces what we all already know, which is Wizards is rushing so many products out, we are paying the price and we're seeing the side effects of it. We're seeing the bannings of cards that weren't properly tested long enough. That's all it is. We're seeing the side effects of delays. I have 350 patrons still waiting for Wave 2 of Commander Collect or Commander Zendikar Collector Boxes, which come out still like three more weeks from now. They still have to wait three more weeks because of supply problems. You know, the only positive thing, at least Wizard says they're going to delay the Commander Legends, finally a positive thing. We're still, I'm still waiting. Literally, I've got three videos of Jumpstart box openings in the queue, and after that, I have zero boxes of Jumpstart. I can't even get one box of Jumpstart. Even if I can call any distributor in the country, I can't even get one box. Even if I offered to pay $200 a box, I still can't get a box because they simply, it just doesn't exist. And see, you know, these problems with supply, lack of testing and just R&D for standard, and the quantity of, you know, we're seeing, there are problems. But the overall foundation of magic is solid. You know, and I know some people may not want to hear that. You know, maybe thumbs down two times, do a little swirly circle. But overall, the foundation is fine. The game is healthy. And, and healthy as in just, you know, the player base hasn't exiled yet. And everything hasn't gone to zero. You know, the game itself remains strong in a 2020 environment. And, you know, going into 2021... I, I do think Magic is positioned to do very well as long as Wizards doesn't just screw it up with endless amounts, like a hundred secret layers, and these crossover things. They got to be real careful with this stuff. The same thing with the gold stamp signatures and these lottery cards. You got to be real careful with this stuff. There's a you can walk a fine line and you can make it work, but you got to be careful. And I hope I hope Wizards understands that, and they're they're just. They're cautious because you can have lottery cards, limited edition numbered, Liliana's dress, one of ten. You can do all this stuff just fine, but you got to be cautious. Secret layers, it's not that big of a deal if they would just do it properly and don't make a million of them of Teletubbies, Barneys, and Furbies. That's kind of the thing. But overall, things are never as bad as they seem, but they're never as good as they seem. The more things change the more they're probably going to stay the same and magic will live on. Honestly, have a great day, everybody. Be safe out there.